Uh, all right. Uh, hi, everyone. Today, we're going to deliver a talk, a lightning talk on how we leverage GitOps to, de uh, to deliver managed red services on Kubernetes reliably at Red Hat. Uh, but before that, let's introduce ourselves. So about me, uh, hi, hi folks, I'm Yashwardhan and I'm currently working as a site reliability engineer at Red Hat, working on all the things around OpenShift and Kubernetes. And I love to spend my time fiddling with Kubernetes, Golang and anything around distributed systems. And to shed off some programmatic monotony, I love to spend my free time outdoors uh, running long distances. So, so that's pretty much about me. Over to Ashish. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Ashish. I'm also a site reliability engineer at Red Hat. Like, yes, I also love Kubernetes. And in my free time, I love learning new programming languages. Uh, when I'm not working, I love to go out hiking in the mountains. So enough about us. Let's talk about managed services at Red Hat. So the core of managed services at Red Hat revolves around our platform, which is called the OpenShift Dedicated. So OpenShift Dedicated is vanilla Kubernetes plus a bunch of operators and webhooks, which makes this version of Kubernetes called as OpenShift, right? So now the unique USP of this uh, uh, platform is that customers can install additional software on top of their clusters. So we call these additional softwares add-ons. And we, the MTSRA team, is on the hook for delivering and supporting these add-ons. Under the hood, these add-ons are nothing but an opinionated way of packaging uh, Kubernetes controllers. Go to the next slide. Yep, managing the add-ons delivery. So as an SRE team responsible for add-ons, we use GitOps to smoothly deliver our add-ons end-to-end. That is from the product developers right to the customers. So how do we do that? We have a couple of repositories, which include the managed tenants bundles repository and the managed tenants repository. Together, these two repositories store the entire state of all the add-ons. Talking about the managed tenants bundles repository, this repository houses all the artifacts of all the add-ons. So what I mean by artifacts is that the deployment of the uh, add-ons operator the CRDs that come with the operator, the stateful sets, and other uh, Kubernetes resources. It can also have dependencies, which, which the add-on depends on this operator. It can also specify that here. Uh, one other thing about this repository is that uh, each add-on artifact is versioned. In that, a particular version of the add-on has its own directory, and its artifacts sit inside that directory. Now, talking about the managed tenants repository, this repository houses all the configuration and metadata of an add-on. So what do I mean by metadata? Things like the name of the add-on, the image of the add-on, the namespace where the add-on has to be installed, and also it can have constraints, uh, the runtime constraints, like you know this add-on can only be installed on clusters where this amount of RAM is present and things like that. Finally, we have pipelines which do the plumbing and communication between these two repositories. Over to the next slide. Yeah. Now let's take a look at uh, the UI, which the customer sees when they have to go and install an add-on in the cluster. Uh, thanks, Ashish. So this screenshot, which folks are seeing in front of you, uh, this is how a cluster looks to a customer when they install an OpenShift dedicated cluster on the Red Hat Cloud. So this UI offers a lot of capabilities to fiddle with the cluster without even opening up your terminal. And as you can see, as a part of this UI, there is an add-on tab, which is selected. And uh, this tab essentially shows the entire catalog of all the add-ons, which a customer can install. Uh, finally, installing an add-on is as simple as just clicking on one of these thumbnails and clicking on the install button and you are done. You can install an add-on, uh, a fully fledged add-on. And if there's a complicated add-on to install, which requires a bunch of input parameters, well, the UI would prompt you to provide those parameters through a through an interactive form so very simple process to install an add-on uh, but the main stuff uh, happens behind the scenes right so let's dive right into it uh, so uh, so don't get freaked out with this diagram this is much more simpler than it looks so you might be noticing a lot of colors flying around here in this diagram but they are essentially meant to emphasize on how abstracted and automated things are from the eyes of both the customer and the core add-on developer uh, with the power of GitOps. So first of all, let's dive into the bottom part of this diagram, which represents the add-on release lifecycle. 
and obviously the customer has no uh, visibility into into this thing only the add on developers the internal red hat add on developers have visibility into the add on release life cycle uh, so the only step they take the only manual step they take the add on developers they only raise one pull request containing the add on artifacts like the deployment yamls the custom resource definitions and what not to the managed tenants bundles repository which ashish talked about and we have continuous integration jobs to ensure that these bundles this pull request is absolutely valid and compliant with our ecosystem before it's merged so so as soon as a merge uh, as soon as a pull request is merged in this managed tenants bundles repository the all these artifacts all these yamls are wrapped into a docker image and this docker image is pushed to one of our internal repository uh, internal registries then the next step is to propagate the link to this newly pushed uh, docker image to the managed tenants repository so just a quick revision um, the managed tenants repository as ashish explained right it houses the configuration and metadata of all the add-ons which includes the name of the add-on the display pic of the add-on parameters of the add-on etc so as a part of all this configuration there is also supposed to be a reference to the artifact image uh, of the add-on and that's exactly what's going to happen in this step the the link of the newly pushed image will be propagated to the to this managed tenants repository and once this propagation is successful our again our automation our gitlab bots they synchronize the entire state of the managed tenants repository with the ocm now what is ocm ocm is the open shift cluster manager and what does it do well it serves our customer and well how does it serve our customer well the ui you saw right this is ocm well this ui plus the backend which powers it that is ocm so yeah so whenever a customer clicks on the install add on button in the ui uh, ocm captures that event and it's like okay cool i'll i'll install the add on on your cluster uh, on your cluster but it doesn't do that directly it actually offloads this job of add on installation to one of our another internal component called hive and hive is basically the component which is like a grand parent of all the customer clusters in the world and it essentially orchestrates the add on installation for all, all of our customers so hive is essentially cube ctl applying uh, all those uh, all those artifacts all those add on manifests on the customer cluster and not only that uh, it also ensures that if the add on is fiddled around in the customer cluster it's reconciled back to the desired state uh, matching exactly what is present in our repositories and what ocm is aware of so that's the beauty of this entire ecosystem powered by gitops right i mean things are abstracted as much as possible most of the things are automated i mean you can look in the diagram most of the text is green colored and well green color in our case represents automated steps and the only manual steps are like one step per person so a customer takes the one manual step of clicking on the install add on button and the add on developers they only take one manual step of raising the pull request that's it everything else is automated and abstracted so i believe that's the power of gitops and shedding more light upon how gitops appliance compliance is achieved with this model uh, i guess ashish is going to continue so over to you ashish yeah let's talk about how we achieve gitop compliance with our add on delivery flow as we've talked about earlier the entire declarative state of all the add-ons is kept in the managed tenants and managed tenants bundles repository and as again we talked about this earlier version it's all the add-on artifacts are version and it's immutable add-on developers are uh, forced to have new patch releases or major releases uh, if they want to push new releases right so it's immutable there unfortunately it's not pulled automatically at the moment we need a manual trigger uh, which in turn uh invokes our bots which would uh, would would push all our add on state into ocm uh and talking about continuous reconciliation we what we have right now is sort of like a lazy reconciliation whenever a change happens in a repository we take the entire state in the managed tenants and managed tenants bundles repository and push it into a platform instead of just isolating that change to a particular add on so in that way we have continuous reconciliation there is already work in progress to make this uh, a true truly continuous reconciliation uh, with periodic uh, reconciliation against the platform uh, that's all folks thanks for coming to our talk and uh, 
feel free to reach us uh, over at our social media handles, which you can see here in the slide. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a nice day.